Hi, welcome to lecture number six. To refresh our memory, we're going to go back and see one of the examples we did in lecture number five. Uh, recall that lecture number five was about conditional probability. So let's say we have an urn which has six red marbles and four red marbles. Six red marbles, and I'm sorry, four black marbles. Four black marbles. Define the following event A1 uh, to be the first draw is black. Okay? Finding that probability is simple enough in the sense that it's simply going to be 4 divided by 10 because we have 10 marbles in the, in the urn. So that's 4 out of 10. Now, if you sample the next one without replacement, so without replacing the first draw, what is the probability of getting a block in the second draw? Okay, given the first one was a black. Given the first one was a black, what is the probability of getting a block in the second? And this is one of the quantities we found in lecture number five. So now, since you've drawn one, you were, you're going to have nine marbles in the urn, and out of the nine, since you had your first one, given the first one is black, since you had your first one black, you only have three black marbles left, so that's going to be one third. What if you did this experiment with replacement instead of without replacement? So this was without replacement. That is, you draw one, you don't replace it back into the urn, and then you draw the next one. What if you do it with replacement? What happens to this conditional probability? Let's do this again with replacement. With replacement. So we have again six red, four black. A1 define it the same way the first draw is black. And probability of A1 is not going to change. So that's simply going to be 4 out of 10. Define A2 to be the second draw is again black. But now, you're doing this with the replacement, so after you draw the first one, you found out it's a black one, you put it back in the urn. Put it back in the urn. So what's the probability of A2 given A1? Here, the fact that you have drawn black in the first uh, trial does not change the outcome of the second trial, because you're putting it back into the urn. So this is again going to be out of 10. So the additional information that you have that your first draw was a black marble does not change the probability of the second draw. This implies that these two events, A2 and A1, are independent. Now I have given you this example, I can define what independence means. Let's say we have two events. Two events A and B are independent. If the occurrence of one does not affect the chances or the probability of the other event, if the occurrence of one does not affect the probability of the other, then the two events are independent. This means that two events A and B are independent if the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. Here, given that you have additional information that B has occurred does not change the probability of the event A or probability of B given A as equal to probability of B. So if you can actually show either one, the probability of A given B is probability of A or two, the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B or another relationship for independent events is the following. Probability of A intersection B is the product of the probabilities probability of A and probability of B. If you can show one of those three conditions are satisfied for two events, then you can conclude 
that the two events are independent. How did I get this? You can take any of this first two uh, expressions. Let's take the first one. Probability of A given B is equal to probability of A. But what do we know about probability of A given B by definition of conditional probability? Probability of A given B is equal to probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. And that we're claiming that it's equal to probability of A. Now, if you rewrite this, you will get probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, which is what we have as our third condition. So if you can uh, show one of those three conditions is satisfied for two events, then you have two independent events. Let's do an example. Let's do an example. Let's say you roll a die. Simple example. You roll a die. Define the following event A. Define event A to be the event that the outcome is an even number. Event that the outcome is an even number. Define an event B, which is the event that the outcome is less than 4. So you roll a die, you have six possible outcomes. Uh, we can actually write the following sets. A is uh, 2, 4, 6. B contains the, the elements 1, 2, and 3. Are A and B independent? If they are independent, we must have that the probability of the intersection being equal to the product of the probabilities. What we need to show is if this condition is satisfied. We know probability of A, which is 1 half. Probability of A is A has three elements and six possible outcomes in our experiment. That's 0 0.5. And we also know that probability of B is again three elements. B has three elements divided by 6, which is 0.5 again. What is the intersection? A intersection B is the following set. A intersection B is 2 is both in A and B. And what else? I think that's it. 2 is the only element in A intersection B. So this implies that the probability of A intersection B is one element out of the six possible outcomes, which is 1 out of 6. So the question you want to ask is, is probability of A intersection B equal to probability of A times probability of B. That is, is 1 over 6 equal to 1 half times 1 half, 0.5 times 0.5, which is 1 over 4? And the answer is no. What does it mean? It means that A and B are actually dependent. They are not independent. Let's do another example. Uh, define another event C in the same experiment where you're again rolling a die. A is even outcomes, B is less than 4, C is outcomes less than 5. Outcome is less than 5. What is that set? That set contains 1, 2, 3, and 4. It has 4 elements. So the probability of C is equal to 4 divided by 6. 2 thirds. Is A independent of C? Or in other words, are events A and C independent? Are they independent? Let's find out. If they are independent, we will see that the intersection of A and C would be the probability of A times the probability of B. Probability of C, I'm sorry. Is this, are these two quantities equal? What is A intersection C? The only two even numbers in C are 2 and 4. So A intersection C contains the elements 2 and 4. 
which implies that the probability of A intersection C is equal to 2 out of 6, which is 1 divided by 3. What is the probability of C? The probability of C is 2 thirds. The probability of A, which we have found, is 1 half. Then the probability of the product, the probability of A times the probability of C, is 2 thirds times 1 third, which is 1 third. So the question you want to ask again is the probability of the intersection equal to the product of the probabilities. The probability of the intersection is 1 third. And the product of the probabilities is 1 third. And you find your answer yes. Which implies that, in fact, A and C are independent. Uh, before I finish this lecture, or this lesson, I want to make sure I give you two points to remember. The first thing is, if two events, let's say events A and B, are independent, so are A complement and B complement. Complement. So what I'm saying here is, if A and B are independent, we know that the probability of A intersection B would be the probability of A times the probability of B. It is also true, if A and B are independent, that P of A complement intersection B complement is equal to P of A complement times P of B complement. And the second point I want to leave you with is a concept of mutual independence. Let's say we have three events, A, B, and C. And we say those three events are mutually independent. If the following conditions are satisfied. Number one, A and B are independent. I can say if the probability of A intersection B is equal to P of A times P of B. Condition number two, A and C must be independent. That is P of A intersection C is P, P of A times the probability of C. Three, B and C are independent. B intersection C has a probability equal to product of the probabilities. And number four, the probability of A intersection B intersection C is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C. Okay. If these four conditions are satisfied, we say the events A B and C are mutually independent. The first three conditions imply pairwise independence. As the name suggests, pairwise. A is independent of B, B independent of C, A independent of C. Okay. 